Yeah, so I think we judo Australia is going two ways now. Before it was all recreational clubs, right? Okay. But now we've got the recreational clubs, and then we've got the professional clubs like mine, and and so I think you need both. In in you yeah. know, um, so that's what we're kind of what's what we're finding. We're finding um, there's the grassroots clubs that are small and volunteer. They do it twice a week for two hours. Then there's the clubs like mine that run 27 or some clubs 47 classes a week, wow. and they're just the powerhouses. So. Um, where it gets tricky in the conversations with how to grow the sport is some people say, oh, but yeah, but Matt's club does this and Matt's club does this. I'm like, yeah, but my club, I'm a full-time judo coach. So you can't do what I do because you work nine to five and then you go to judo in the afternoon and you're tired from work and you can't do what I do. So it's important that we realize that there's, there's, we need both. We need small, medium and large clubs to grow judo. Um, right. We just need them. And, and not force the little clubs to become big because they don't want to become big. Um, right. They want to stay small. So, yeah. So I think it would be probably the same in the States, right? There's kind of clubs that are just 30 members forever and they're okay with that. And you can yeah. tell them all day long to get more members. They're like, we don't really want to. We, we just do this for fun. We want to come here twice a week and talk a little bit, throw each other around and go home. Yeah. And I think that it sounds like we're, we're pretty much the same here in the United States because that nonprofit, we have like the YMCA, like you're talking about. And I grew up in a very similar club to that, like at a local community center. And then we have the Japanese uh, cultural centers, which is kind of the same thing, but those clubs are a little bit bigger um, and those still exist and they're great clubs, but now you're starting to see more professional clubs. And I think that that's honestly the growth rate because those nonprofit club, the clubs, there's no growth in that. There hasn't been any growth for the last 30 years. It's pretty stagnant. I wouldn't say they're dying yet, but they're struggling. Some of them are struggling and all the clubs that are opening and starting to get big are the ones that are taking the professional route because they're, they're realizing that that's the only way to really attract students and, and to provide those services that people are looking for. So that is definitely the way to success in my opinion here in the United States. And it sounds like it's, it's very similar in the United, in, uh, in Australia. Is there any uh, concentrated effort from the Federation to help that professional side of judo? Yeah, so they started maybe three, four years ago with like a national club seminar where everyone comes to a place and you have people speak about how they run their clubs and, and you know, what holiday programs they may run and whatever. So, um, or what games to run and, and that sort of stuff. So they're kind of starting to do that. But even in that, there's still, there's no buy-in from people. Like we're going to run this huge seminar and you're going to come and learn from, and it was just before, I, I actually haven't, um, since it rained my club, I haven't been able to go to one, but um, they have asked me to speak on the social uh, marketing element of it and that sort of stuff. Um, but even then they got 15 clubs coming out of, you know, you put on this huge event and still not many clubs are buying into it. Right. Um, Cause a lot of clubs, the, the real question is, do you want your club to grow? And you can, you kind of know the clubs that want to grow and the ones that don't, it's that simple. And so there's an element of going, these clubs don't want to grow. And that's why they're not, reading books on how to grow a club. Like when I started, before I started my club, I read every book on how to run a Taekwondo club, karate club. Like I read up and I learned how to do this stuff. I paid an online coach to teach me how he ran his Taekwondo school. And right. then I just did everything that he said, literally everything he said, I did exactly what he said. And within one year, I got 99 members. I didn't get a hundred, you know, and, and now we're at, we're at nearly 300, I think now. Um, soon, because I'm about to start to um, get into some more uh, primary schools, you call them elementary schools, right. um, So, which will boost my membership. But it's not necessarily, I'm never about numbers and membership, but on the flip side, numbers and membership pay my rent for the club. So I do need to talk about it, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I, I think it's it's an important conversation to have. And I think we have the same struggle here in the United States where the, the national federations, I don't know that they have the experience to do what I'm asking you. You know, you know, the, most of the people that run the federations are the people that have been running the nonprofit clubs for the last 30 years. So I think- Because they, they're, they're the ones that have the time to go to the meetings. Because yeah. they only run judo twice a week, right? Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I had one person say to me at, from one of these clubs, you charge too much money your club's too expensive. And I said, well, how come you have 30 members and I have 250 if I'm expensive? Like clearly I'm not them if I've got, but it, I'll take, I'll listen to their advice because those small clubs still have good advice. I listen to everyone's advice. I don't go, yeah. I'm bigger than you, stop it. But on the flip side, I go, no, you're just too cheap. And um, yeah, 